Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Time to take that walk and go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Hopefully this is going to be a treat. This is Jubilee the 8th. And uh, this is a retired beer. It's a, it's a brewed once beer. It's an anniversary beer. And from the information I'm reading, I don't see anything written on the bottom. Of course, it's a uh, strong dark ale. Uh, there may be something digitized on here. We'll take a closer look. But what I've read and seen on here, it doesn't even have the ABV on here, I don't think. I do not see it anywhere on here, guys. So, uh, uh, this beer was added uh, to uh, Rate Beer and Beer Advocate November of last year. So, I'm pretty sure this is last year's uh, edition. And the commercial description on this uh, says, 8th anniversary beer aged 6 months in rum barrels. And it was uh, first added in, in November of 2014. And here we are... Uh, right December of 2015 so uh, I think this beer has been in a bottle for at least a year now so uh, and it's corked and caged uh, says here says 12 percent on uh, beer advocate but it says 12 and a half percent on rate beer so I'm not exactly sure what the ABV is on it uh, uh, when they don't put it on the bottle anywhere it's uh, and it changes from year to year uh, it's hard to tell guys so it's somewhere around the 12 percenter maybe a little more not real sure so uh, let's get on with this one uh, says here food pairings for this beer cuisine is barbecue cheeses are sharp blue cheddar and your more pungent stronger uh, cheeses gorgonzola limburger the meat is beef grilled meat blackbird snifter tulip goblet chalice Oversized wine glass. I got my favorite glass here today, guys. And it says can be sold for long periods under the proper conditions. Uh, very big beer for the first beer of the day at 12%. I don't usually start off with a, a beer this big uh, for the first beer of the day, but uh, we're dwindling down and I have a lot of big beers uh, in the refrigerator. So uh, we're going to start off with a 12%er today. So a lot will get my buzz. My, uh, buzz on quick we're in the hammer lane so uh, when you get a bottle like this you ought to drink this style of uh, beer with this ABV at home uh, 12 or 12 and a half percenter is a mighty big beer to be drinking out in a pub or a bar wouldn't take wouldn't take much of this before you know you are being pulled over and the blue lights are in your mirror and if that happens and you've had one of these more than likely you're going to get a DUI and that, that's not fun for anybody guys so once you get to these these big beers like this you probably ought to try to drink them at home except I got enough strength to get this cork out of here all right hopefully it don't explode let's see what kind of pop we get just a little pop on that one all right 12 percenter you think it's going to pour ahead let's go down the center on this one guys Ooh, yeah, it looks like it's pretty well carbonated. Don't believe we want to go down the center on this one. It looks pretty well carbonated. So let's ease this one down the side of the glass here. Now we'll kick it up a notch. All right. 
Ooh, I'm getting a little bit of booziness from here. Aged in the rum barrels. Uh, about a finger and a half of head on there. It's pretty dark. I'm not even getting any light through the thin part of the glass. There may be a little light through the outside. It's kind of brown around the bottom thin part of the glass down here. Not getting a whole lot. It's fairly dark beer. Uh, and they're calling it a uh, Belgian Strong Dark Ale at Beer Advocate. So, good looking beer. Let's get a nose on it. Uh, a lot of dark fruit in there. Some plums, dates, figs, raisins. A little bit of caramel, a little bit of toffee. A little bit of the rum is in there. It does have a slightly boozy smell to it, but that will probably subside a little bit as it warms up to room temperature. It's fresh right out of the bottle. We're going to let it breathe a little bit. Very sweet candied sugar smell. Really a, a nice smelling beer, it really is. Hmm. Let's let this thing breathe for a minute before we take a sip of it. Still got about a finger of head. It's hanging around longer than I thought it would. Well, it's that time. Cheers, everybody. Very pleasant. A nice, sweet back end on this. Not getting a whole lot of alcohol in the taste for first beer of the day, being a 12% or a 12% plus. A little bit of booziness on the nose, but it's it's pretty well hidden in the taste. Elworks works is out of Williamsburg, Virginia. That's that's fairly tasty. Not blowing my hair back and my socks off or anything. Not getting a lot of the Belgian yeast qualities. Uh, any of that bubblegumish farmhouse spunkiness or whatever you want to call it. Definitely hints of the dark fruit in there. Maybe some dark cherries. Very tasty. Let me take it back, let her have a sip two or three, and sip on it for a little bit and see what we end up with here. Seems to be pretty decent. I don't know if it's going to end up in the A category. Let me sip on it for a while and we'll find out. I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. Been sipping on it about uh, 30, 35 minutes or so. This seems to be very tasty guys. Uh, very disappointed in them at Ale Works. Even though it's a brewed once beer and it's got a cellophane clear label that they put on this bottle. It has no date, which is uh, a no-no in my book. And it doesn't have the ABV on the label. They've only, they're only using this cellophane clear label one time. So why would they not put the ABV on the label there somewhere since they're not even using the label over and over and over again? And why not put the date on there too? So, there's several things wrong with this packaging here, guys. No ABV, no date. Why should you have to go to the website to find that information out? You shouldn't. You shouldn't have to. So, uh, a couple of no-nos on this. The beer is decent, guys. It, it is a fairly tasty beer. I don't think it's to the A category, but it is a decent, well-made beer. Uh, I'm getting slight hints of the rum, not overpowering. I'm getting more booziness in the nose than I am the taste. Uh, dark cherries and dark fruit, a little bit of candied sugar, uh, caramel and toffee, a decent representation of what a dark ale would be, or a strong dark ale. Not getting a lot of Belgian influences. So, uh, I mean, for a Belgian ale, I was expecting more Belgian qualities than I'm getting uh, on this beer, so. It's 
very well made because the alcohol is hidden on the taste. I mean, I'm not getting any booziness on the taste. A little bit on the nose, but not on the taste. So it tells me it's a well-made beer. So the lack of information on the bottle is the biggest deterrent from this. And the Belgian yeast is not very present. I mean, I'm not getting a whole lot. I mean, they could have used a California ale yeast or something else and got about the same results. Uh, the, their Belgian yeast is not, yeah, it's not batting 100 here, guys. So let's do the final chug here. A decent beer. Even though I don't remember what I paid for this beer, I'm sure it wasn't cheap. Whenever you see the corked and case, it's not the huge bottle. This is like the uh, says 12.7 fluid ounces, so it's just a little bit more than a 12 ounce bottle. And this this was probably this was probably a eight to ten dollar bottle of beer. Uh, I mean, anytime you see something that's aged in rum barrels, and it was in the rum barrels for six months, according to what I have here, so. Seemed like it would have had more influence of that, and some woodiness, and maybe some vanilla that I'm just not getting, guys. So don't think it was a first run rum barrel. Probably had beer in it before. So as far as I'm concerned, on what I have here, uh, everything seemed to come together well and it's selling well. But the Belgian yeast is not there where it should be, and. Uh, the lack of information on the label, the dating, at least the vintage, and the ABV. That needs to be on there since they're only using this label one time. Put it on there, guys. What's up? So, as far as I'm concerned, guys, uh, this is a B beer. And this, and that's about where I'm going, I'm going to put it. Uh, if I was putting a numeric rating on this, guys, it would probably be an 85. It, it would be a, a little more information and a little more Belgian yeast influence. Uh, it might get a little bit better grade than what we're, what we're getting in now, but it is what it is. 85 for me. That's just where I'm going to put it. Uh, a B beer. Uh, over to uh, Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 87. Very good. It is, I don't know if I'd say very good. It is a good beer. It is better than average, but the lack of the Belgian yeast qualities and the lack of information on the label is a big deterrent for me. Uh, over to... Uh, Rate beer, rate beer is not as kind as I am. Rate beer says overall 76 and 39 in the style. Uh, so we got a 76, we got an 85, and we got an 87. Uh, a lot of times beer advocates uh, ratings will be lower than uh, rate beers, but not on this occasion. Uh, there's a little bit better rating on uh, uh, beer advocate than there is rate beer on here. 85 for me guys, it's a B beer. I, Probably not something that I would buy again. Of course, it's a retired beer. Maybe that's the reason. Even though it's an anniversary ale, they may come out with the Jubilee 9. Uh, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, I would probably not purchase that uh, if it's a 8 to $10 bottle of beer. There are better Belgian uh, strong dark ales out there. Than what I'm getting here, and I hate to be that way because they're in Virginia. I'm in Virginia. I like to support the local. I consider Virginia breweries local, even though they're three hours away from me. Uh, I try to support those guys, and they do a lot of really good stuff. I've had some a lot of good, tasty beers from them, but this one is a little subpar in my opinion. So that's where I'm going to leave it. If you had this one, they're Jubilee Eight uh, Ale Aids and Rum Cask. Let me know what you think, uh, and let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. See everybody then.